episode 9. Written by Angela Chern. I told you. I closed my eyes. I bet you did. Here. I appreciate it. Thanks. Bev, where'd you put that delivery of nuts? Oh. Morning, Farhad. Good morning, Alan. I was just going. See you later. You shouldn't be answering the door in your dressing gown. Don't be so daft. It covers more than my normal clothes. What did he want, anyway? I had a phone number for him. Somebody wants to talk to him about a commission. And that was funny? No. The blind's broken in the bathroom. Poor Farhad nearly got an eyeful. Did he now? Did you get out the wrong side of the bed this morning or something? I'm off to get dressed. I'll have a look at that blind. No need. I've already called Logan. Hello? Hello? G? Lewis, I'm in here. Get me out. Oh, cheers, mate. Is that tea for me? Uh, yes. What were you doing in the spare room? Well, I needed the loo. Oh, tell me you didn't. What? No. As if. It's just all Dad's old police crap is in there. Chill out. I'm not that hungover. Anyway, what kind of moron has a room with no doorknob on the inside? What kind of moron goes in a box room for a pee? I didn't know it was the spare room, did I? You need to fix that knob. It's only used as a junk room. Anyway, what's the plan? Are you going to sort stuff out with your dad or what? I don't know. Hold this a tick. I need the loo. Gee, mate. Uh, back in a mo. Uh, which door? Any chance of some loose change? Sure. There's a box at the top of the stairs. 20 quid, do you? Perfect. Cheers. All right, Sam. You look like you've seen a ghost. Yeah, uh, no. Not sure. Something weird just happened. What do you mean? I was walking across the square and I thought I saw... No. No, never mind. You wouldn't believe me if I told you anyway. Look, did our Jeet stay here last night? Yes. Why? Fathers and sons, mate. Tell me about it. I've taken £20 in pound coins. I'll pay you back this off. No rush. I know where you live. <laughs> Thanks. See you later. Hey, listen. Did Ray Crick ring you? I had a couple of missed calls from him earlier. I haven't got back to him yet. He's only going to be wanting a moan. No, he's not. He rang me too. So what was it this time? Pensions? Early darts? The new chief inspector? It's Charlie Branson, Al. That old waste of space. What's up with him? Not a lot. He's dead. Ah, oh, this is my favourite photo of her. Whitby a couple of years back. Mum was just coming out of the chip shop and this seagull swooped in and tried to nick her chips. Mum had hold of one side of the box and the bird the other. It was like some bonkers tug of war. <laughs> I mean, my mind is on your mum. She was not letting go of them chips, was she? She was hungry. <laughs> Give us my phone back then. Jeez. Oh, I miss her, you know? It's not right what happened. No, but honestly, mate, blaming your dad's not helping. Yeah, well, she wouldn't have needed to be working in the first place if Dad had a decent job. Oh, come on, your mum loved being a nurse. I mean, she'd have done it, you know, even if your dad won the lottery. You think? Don't you? You took your time. Sorry, love, but you'll never guess who I just saw. The abominable snowman? Did you get the change? Oh, yes. We owe Alan 20 quid. I'll make a note of it, since we can't trust your memory. Honestly, Tan, I don't remember putting that cash in my overalls. Obviously. So, go on, then. Go on what? Oh, see? Brain like a sieve. Who was it you thought you saw? You're not going to believe this. Simran. That's not funny. I'm not joking. Well, you must be imagining things. I'm not, I swear. Memory loss, hallucinations. Have you been overdoing it on the cold and flu pills again? I know what I saw. Oh, whatever, Matt. Just don't go around telling anyone else. They'll be measuring you up for a padded cell. Well, it's a bit far-fetched, isn't it? Everybody seems pretty convinced it was an accident. With no witnesses. Well, that's not that unusual. You remember that guy... What's his name? Sven something or other. Sven Samson. And that was different. 
He was a stalker. Who tried to stab the copper who put him away. And what about Jenny Ellis? Well, she was just crazy. She booked a church and a wedding reception. She thought she was marrying Jack Trainer. Well, you'd have to be a bit nuts to marry DCI Trainer. Anyway, look, according to Rick, they're not looking for anybody. Charlie Branson was the best pursuit driver they had. He knew his way around cars. I just can't see him wrapping his car around a lamppost. You're overthinking it. All I'm saying, and you know this as well as I do, is that coppers make more enemies than they do friends. All right, Maggie. What can I do for you? Can I put this in your window? Let's have a look. I thought I might sort out the debate about who runs the pie stall at the fete. Pie baking competition. Hmm. Are you sure? You know how competitive people get about this stuff? Lesser of two evils. And it saves me having to pick somebody. Won't you have to pick the winner, though? Hmm. So, fancy being a judge? <laughs> Not flaming likely. I might even give it a go myself. <laughs> what? I can bake. Oh, right, yes, of course you can. I'm announcing it on the radio this afternoon, but if you can, thanks. Have one on the house. You giving our profits away again? Logan's fixed the bathroom blind. I'm just being hospitable. That's all right. You can owe me one. Well, just let me know when you want to collect. I'd rather settle up now, if you don't mind. No, seriously, it was a ten-minute job. Well, that's really kind of you, isn't it, Alan? Yeah, really kind. Anyway, places to go, radio shows to present. See you later. Come in for that pint tonight. We'll even stretch you a pizza if you're lucky. <laughs> How can I resist that? See you later. Do you have to? It's one bar meal, Alan. It's not going to break the bank. Oh, damn. What? He's gone and left his coat. I'll run after him. No need. He's coming in tonight, remember? He can pick it up then. Dad? Jeet! I was beginning to worry. Are you all right? I stayed at Lewis's. Right. OK. Listen, about yesterday... Yeah, sorry about that. Me too. It's not easy for either of us, but we shouldn't be having a go at each other. I was thinking, do you want me to go into town, get you a new phone? Not yet. Let's see if this actually works first. You fished it out of the lake. And stuck it in rice, like they tell you to. Uh, Dad, hmm? not sure that really works, and... Even if it does, you're definitely not supposed to cook the rice first. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're going to need a new phone. Uh. Hey, what's up with your phone? <laughs> He's risottoed it. <laughs> oh, it's different. Listen, um, I didn't want to be the one to tell you this, but somebody's got to. Sounds ominous. Thing is, it's all around the village. I, I thought it best you hear it from me. Hear what? People are saying that they've seen your mum again. Is, is that some kind of sick joke? Somebody's idea of one at any rate. Yeah, well, I saw her too. You are not putting that lot in our bedroom. It's got to go somewhere. Yeah, to the tip. It's junk. I'm not taking it to the tip. It might come in useful. It's a box of broken tools. Stick it in the shed. They'll get nicked. Nobody in their right mind is going to nick those, love. I'll put them in the spare room for now. You can't get anything else in that room. Believe me, I've tried. What the...? What? Have you been going through my boxes? Why on earth would I want to do that? Well, somebody has. Mum, I can't find the cheese and onion. Dump that and come on. It's getting busy. Daisy, where have you been? Working. Why? Have you been in the spare room for anything? I wouldn't dare enter the man cave. Are you sure? Maybe you were looking for something. Dad, it's full of boxes of your old police stuff, moth-eaten clothes and ancient Christmas decorations. What would I be looking for? Dad? What is it? Never mind. You're working late? Yeah. 
Well, look, I'm sorry. Maybe I made a mistake, yeah? Anyway, I just wanted to check you're okay. Whatever. No, I say we go to the pub. They'll all be there and call them out. Find out what the hell they're playing at. But obviously, I know it wasn't your mum, but whoever it was did look like her. And they say everybody's got a double. Yeah, well, mum has got a double. But Auntie Pia doesn't live here, does she? But she can still visit, right? Auntie Pia! <laughs> Missed me? What are you doing here? I'm wondering that myself. I've been walking around all day trying to decide if it was a good idea. Well, half the village are convinced they're seeing ghosts, including me. I wasn't sure what sort of reception I'd get. What do you mean? It's great to see you. Arjun? Yeah? Of course. Steak and onion, I reckon. You are entering then? Why not? It'll be a laugh, and let's face it, there's not a lot of competition. <laughs> Don't let Lisa hear you say that. Well, yes, Lisa, obviously. But other than that... Tanny reckons she might throw a hat in. A hat, exactly what it'll taste like. Daisy! Just being honest. Are you sure you've not been in there? <sighs> For goodness sake, how many times? No, I haven't been rooting around in your stuff. Lewis? Yes, Dad. I was so fascinated by your old police crap, I just had to go through every little bit of it. I was proper drooling. There's no need for that. Well, seriously. Anyway, I'm off upstairs. Brian needs a walk. Uh, yeah, yeah. You asked for that. Maybe I did. Oh, it's tipping it down out there. I can see you're dripping all over my carpet. Oh, sorry. I do not with you. Uh, no, Simran's sister turned up. Her twin sister. She wasn't at the funeral, was she? Couldn't come, could she? Not under government restrictions. The fact of the matter is, we haven't seen her for ages. Came as a bit of a shock, if I'm honest. What can I get you? It's all right, I'll do this. You go get Maggie's butty. I'll have a pint, please, Al. What's up with you? Nothing. Well, somebody's been through my stuff, you know, from my days in the force. Really? I thought you were going to get rid of all that. I couldn't, could I? Some of that paperwork, well, let's just say there's a tail or two in there and leave it at that, eh? So is something missing? Something we'd all prefer not to go public? Nah, not that I could tell. Honestly, forget I said a thing. Bev's right. I'm being stupid. I just don't like the idea of, you know, some ghosts need to stay dead if you catch my drift. I know that feeling. Did you leave the back door open? No. I can't find Brian. Alan? I'll go. You'll get soaked. That's Logan's coat. I'm sure he won't mind. Logan. Oh, sorry, Alan. I thought you were... Have you seen Brian? Brian? A greyhound, remember? He got out. Not for the first time, is it? Last time you found him down the allotments on Shaw's Lane, didn't you? After the rabbits, yeah. Ah. Oh. I should have brought a torch. You need some help? Yes, mate. Can you check up the play part? Thanks. Brian! Brian! Stupid dog. I can't see a bloody thing. Oh! Cheers for that, mate. Jeez! Idiot! Brian! Oh, come on. Where are you? Brian! Ouch! Oh! Oh! Stupid potholes. Great. Shoes ruined. Brian! Oh, come on, boy! Where is he? What if he's got himself stuck somewhere? It's all right, Mum. Dad will find him. That dog barely has enough sense to cock a leg when he pees. Oh, stop worrying. Here we are, then. Bit the worse for the weather, but all in one piece. Oh, Brian! Come here, you naughty boy. Cheers, pal. Share it around. Daisy, get me a towel. Oh, you poor thing. Where have you been? Where was he? Up at the playground, sheltering under the slide. Looking very sorry for himself. Alan went looking for him. Yeah, I saw him. He was heading toward the allotments. 
Oh, shall I ring him? He didn't take his phone. Look, get Lewis to cover the bar, dry Brian off and put a coat on him. He's shivering. I'll look for your dad. Do you need a hand? No, you've already done enough. You brought one of my boys home. I'll find the other one. Alan! Well, at least it stopped raining. Al! Al! Where the hell are you? Alan! Oh, my God, Alan! <laughs> Greenborn, Episode 9, was written by Angela Cham. Alan Godwin was John Altman. Beverly Godwin was Corin Wicks. Sam Sharma, Pal Aaron. Evie Lejeune, Louise Jameson. Farhad Madani, Rad Rawi. Jeet Sharma, Shash Hira. Louis Godwin, Finley Pyle. Matt Jefferson, Ali Zane. Tani Jefferson, Amy Roxon, Maggie Roberts, Laura Shavin, Logan Coburn, Joshua Manning, Arjun Sharma, Raj Gatak, Daisy Godwin, Lucy Fish, Pia Chandola, Bhavnisha Palmer, Chloe Chan, Rebecca Yeo. Greenborn was devised by Colin Brake, based on an original idea by Colin Brake and Andrew Mark Sewell. Greenborn FM Station Sound by DivaWeb. Original Music, Tim Arnold. Sound design and post-production, Kirsty Gilmore. The studio manager was Wilfredo Acosta. Series producer was Helen Quigley. And the director, Andrew Mark Sewell. Greenborn is a B7 media production made with the support of the Audio Content Fund. Visit Greenborn online at greenborn.co.uk.